just how good was he, you think, by Setic? And this brings back to the conversation we had before the mm. game. Are Liverpool actually better without Thiago? Okay, yeah. <laughs> so that, yeah. <laughs> Liverpool played better today without him mm. because there was an understanding, I think, there with Jordan Henderson, um, uh, with uh, Fabinho and uh, by Setic. The first half, again, he was, he was a bit cagey, but they were solid. I think once the first goal had gone in, and especially in that second half, he, again, we're talking about confidence. His confidence grew and grew. I mean, we, we were laughing yeah. about his back heel clearances, <laughs> uh, but that was a confident player being able to do that. There were moments there in the game where he looked the mature... I mean, he's very young, he's 18 yeah. years old, but he looked mature and he looked part of the he team. Whereas I think calm, composed, decision-making, yeah, very smart as well. In recent weeks, I felt that when he's been playing, he looks like the young player in the Liverpool team, whereas today he looked like a, a much more confident player. So the win would have given not just Liverpool confidence, but him as an individual. I thought today he was excellent. Alan? I thought, yeah, I was impressed, I, I must admit. Um, as Jamie was saying, we were having a, a chuckle every now and then because he does like that little back uh, flick. Um, with the ball, no, we can't. We our, our knees are too <laughs> stiff now. Um, but no, he was he was very composed. He was very assured in possession. Um, he liked the switch of play. Um, I thought he kept it simple when he needed to. He broke things up when he had to. You know, yeah, I, you know, I can see why. You know, we were speaking about him in man of the match. You know, uh, material. A very accomplished performance by the young lad. I mean, as a manager, as a coach, how do you spot a young talent that you know? can do big things, that has potential? What's the difference that you can usually see? Well, he, he's, he is, you know, predominantly a defender. Yeah. You know, so you can see why he's, you know, by Jürgen Klopp's put him in that defensive role, sitting in front of the back four. He has an understanding of, of where he needs to be in, 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 that, in that area of the field to break things up. And that's predominantly, I would have thought, what his main role is. But then when you can add, add into that, the fact that you, you can link, link up the passes, you can, he, can he, got, he got forwards, you he, know. He can start the move as well. Yeah, he started you know, the move with Gordy Gakpo's goal as well. And I think in terms, well, of, look at that. in terms of tonight's game, mm. um, you know, we were talking about Thiago. I think Liverpool's three in there tonight with with Basetic, um, Fabinho and Henderson. It, it combated Everton's midfield three. And mm. I think it was the right three for this game. Yeah. I think, I mean, in answer to your question, the when you've got a young player, you need to have a solid team for him to go in there so he can find himself. Otherwise, you end up with what we've seen with Liverpool in recent weeks at least, mm. is too much pressure on him to be able to do everything right all the time, which he can't. Today, as I say, I, th I just felt that Liverpool were so in command of the game yeah. that allowed him to flourish. And obviously, that second goal makes yeah. a massive difference because any mistake isn't going to be as crucial. And he, fortunately for him, he didn't make the mistakes. And as you said, he set up that second goal, was involved in a build-up to that second goal. And... Yeah, it's just everything you want as a manager. Go out there, youngster, do your, do your best and get a fruitful reward from it. Well, he's got that well, to When we watched that second goal then, from Everton's perspective, how disappointing was it defensively? I mean, the, the amount of space that they allow Salah to run into, then not spotting Cody Gappo as well on the on the far post. Is... I think the one thing that Everton didn't cope with tonight, Michelle, was Liverpool's pace breaking forward. They couldn't, they couldn't live with it. The amount of times where Liverpool outnumbered Everton on the counter attack, you know, was was I would say at least six times that I can think of, and Everton were always chasing shadows from from that point of view. You know, you look look at the, the still then. You know, you've got four Liverpool players in the box from a counter attack. You know, they once they got past the press, Liverpool were impressive in terms of the amount of numbers they got forward. Yeah, I mean that's Andy Roberts there in the middle, yeah. isn't it? I mean he's run. Yeah. I mean the pass to Andy Roberts and he's broken through. Obviously with this pace, he he's going to have an advantage. But he's taken defenders away, which has allowed that ball in at the back post for for Cody Gapko. Um, and again, Cody Gapko involved with the goal in that one, and actually as a as a, um, a distraction perhaps for the first goal. So you know, again, good game for him in the end.